Hello, and welcome to Archvelda's Hacks with Archvelda and his amazing hacks. In this video, I'll be revealing the top 10 macros I use when finding and unleashing exploits. I would strongly recommend bookmarking, favoriting, or otherwise recording the location of this video, as you will need to access it quickly, repeatedly in the future. The first macro I'll be talking about is a macro designed primarily, but not exclusively, for exploration. The very first technique most explorers learn to break out of instances is the infamous growth glitch method, and the idea is to place your character next to a wall, increase your character's size using a item such as Elixir of Giant Growth. Now I'm going to illustrate this by getting out of the old Karazhan raid instance. You can get out of Karazhan in under a minute using this method. Enter Karazhan, go through the door, turn right at the entrance and pass through the area with the spiders and place your character in this position. Use an elixir of giant growth or other size increase method. Now you have to log out and you can log out in the conventional manner but that will take you 20 seconds or you can just hit all plus F4 but that will require you to reload your quant which will probably take a lot longer than 20 seconds. If you use the following macro then you will be taken directly to the reload screen. In this particular case I know glitching in this wall will get me out of the instance so this saves me exactly 20 seconds. If you are searching for a location to glitch out of in a newer instance that doesn't have a known glitching point you will end up trying this multiple times and you really need this macro for the process to be time efficient. The following macro is a signature move of the great explorer stroke exploiter Hasbazi whose channel I'll link to below. Say you want to get up normally in passable terrain like these mountains in the Eye of Ashara dungeon instance. You'll need a balanced druid with the level 15 talent Force of Nature and the level 30 talent Wild Charge. The following macro allows you to use an ingenious method to summon Treants at a targeted location and then immediately use your Wild Charge ability to scale the mountain. It is a very satisfying technique to use and trivializes escape from many outdoor dungeons. The next macro quite literally freezes your character in time. This freezes the player in their current position for as many seconds as you enter into the macro. And this macro is a real godsend for explorers, as it is effectively an additional mobility talent. I'll illustrate the primary use of the macro here. Say for example I'm on my demon hunter and I want to get on top of this awning here. Using Vengeful Retreat, it is clear I'm going to fall short, however well I time it. Now, if I try the same jump, but at the apex of Vengeful Retreat, I activate the Freeze macro, I'm frozen in place for 15 seconds. What you're watching is actual real-time in-game footage, I haven't edited the video. At the end of 15 seconds, the cooldown on Vengeful Retreat has run down, and I can reactivate it in mid-air allowing me to complete the jump successfully. Let's use a slightly more complex and realistic example. I was experimenting with some speed leveling techniques in Bloodmore Slag Mines. Now, if you don't kill the first two bosses, there's a barrier to the final boss in this dungeon in the form of this enormous flying wall. I know from watching the YouTuber Sheik Runner that if you can jump across to the rock on the left, you can get over the wall. The idea being that you jump on top of this rock on the right and then back over to the rock on the left. Now if you watch Sheik Runner's videos you'll know that his demon hunter is highly optimised for speed and a normal character is not going to be able to make this jump. So again we use the freeze macro, uh, we use vengeful retreat and then freeze at the apex of the jump. You'll want to spam Vengeful Retreat before the Freeze Macro expires. Don't spam the Macro itself or you'll crush the client. 
All that remains now is to jump over the flame wall, glide down, and then go and kill the boss and clear the instance in record time. The next macro is incredibly useful for a whole range of things, as it allows you to automate your play to some extent. This is the anti-AFK macro, and it does exactly what it says. You use it, and you won't be logged out. Now, it is worth mentioning for the benefit of veteran players that it is no longer the case in Legion that pet and minion kills don't count as player kills. So in theory, for pet using classes, you can just use this macro and let your pet level for you. Or if you don't have a pet, use quest guardians. You can also use this technique to grind specific items which are awarded directly on player kills and also grind reputation as I show in my most recent video here. The following macro was explained to me by a viewer of this channel called Scotty. Although this is a hunter specific method, it can be worthwhile using a class hunter trial just to use this technique. Hunters have an ability called Eagle Eye, which allows you to see things from the position of a targeted circle. It's a very useful ability, and it is much preferable to its Shaman counterpart, Farsight, in that it has no cast time. The big problem with Eagle Eye, or so I thought, is that unlike Farsight, you can't chain cast it, so you are limited to one viewpoint within line of sight of the Hunter. Scotty was kind enough to explain to me that this very simple macro allows the ability to be cast and recast indefinitely, allowing you to see things vast distances away. Now, this has a number of uses. One of the most fun uses is just pure exploration. You can pass through impassable barriers with Eagle Eye and see things that are otherwise impossible to access. For example, you can see the infamous smiley face under Karazhan, using this method as I'm demonstrating here. You can also use this macro to see things like the WKD room in Orgrima and old outlands in the dead mines. And you can use it to take screenshots and video footage that would normally be impossible without the use of a private server. There are other applications for this method to do with gold farming, which have been some of my most popular posts on my Patreon feed. Unfortunately, I can't share these publicly as they'd get hot fixed if I explained exactly what I was doing. But if you think about it a little, you may be able to work out how to turn this macro into gold. The next macro does not trigger exploits at all by itself, but if you try and find exploits, you will need it, because you spend so much time out in the world trying to find weird quests and items tucked away in the middle of nowhere. This macro will give you coordinates that update continuously in real time. This doesn't show up so well on YouTube's small default screen, but you can just about see the X and Y coordinates in the top middle. This is one of the biggest time savers I've found since I started playing WoW. A convenient and non-intrusive custom script that gives you all the information you need, no more and no less. Speed is critical for so many exploits, and you'll often need to know your specific speed to assess when you've glitched something. It is not always obvious, and for this reason you'll want to use this macro to assess exactly what your speed is at any given moment. This macro is very useful for terrain exploration and breaking out of instance type situations as you often need to know exactly how much thrust you're going to have uh, when you're trying to make a critical jump. The following method is useful when you find an item which has the split and stack glitch and this happens a lot with bugged consumable items. For example, take the Shadowberry, a drop from Mother Omra in Shadowmoon Valley, which heals you for 2% of your health every 5 seconds for 1 minute. 
if you take another shadow berry immediately after the first one, then it just resets the duration. That's what's supposed to happen. But if you put a berry in a different slot in your backpack by using shift, you'll find that when you consume it, that you get a secondary buff. And you can actually stack multiple healing buffs. In this case, a maximum of five different buffs for 10% healing every 10 seconds for a minute. Now, to do this in an actual combat situation, it obviously isn't practical to click on each of the berries manually. Thankfully, Geln Kapperson 10 came up with this ingenious macro in a comment on an old video of mine. The number on the left indicates the bag number, and the number on the right indicates the slot in the bag from left to right. Just keep pressing the macro, and it will use every berry in your backpack. The final macro was contributed by Arcanite on Owncore some months ago. And what this amazing macro does is increase the size of the projected textures of certain large buildings. And when this was active a few months ago, it was absolutely game-breaking. You could do all th kinds of things, uh, such as floating in mid-air in PvP. The reason it's last on the list is that the macro has been heavily nerfed. When this video footage was shot, you could set the variable in question to zero, and now it can only be set to a minimum of 200. So there are only occasional situational applications for this macro now. However, it's worth bearing in mind that every time there's a new patch, things can be rolled back. So there's the video. Hope you liked it, and if you did, why not subscribe? And if you really liked it, why not consider joining my super secret Patreon feed, where you can get exploits on a continuous basis, long before they appear on YouTube, and also a treasure trove of content which I can publish publicly without it getting instantly fixed. That said, if you can't afford it or you just don't want to join, then I'm committed to providing the best possible content I can on this YouTube channel for the foreseeable future. Thanks for watching. This has been Archfelder.